Hi there. If you just got a brand new Fuji Film X-T3 and wondering how to set it up for landscape photography, this video is for you. Hi, and welcome to 2021. <laughs> it's much the same as 2020, but it's good news in this channel because I now have a brand new X-T3 from Fuji Film, and I'm looking to set it up for landscape photography. So, and the background for this video is that I bought an X-T3 just about exactly a year ago, and due to a uh, tripod failure, um, my camera got uh, broken be beyond economic repair uh, back in December, and the nice people at Direct Line Insurance have just paid for a brand new camera, which has just arrived today, and I've been setting it up, getting it ready so that I can go out and take some new photographs. So that's what this uh, video is about and I hope it's going to be useful to you. So I've got the camera out and now I'm going to show you on the menus how I'm uh, setting up from out of the box settings to the ones that I prefer uh, for landscape photographing. But before you do that, once you've got the camera out, something that you should do before you do anything else, which is um, make sure that the camera has the latest firmware update. And you can do that um, by using the Fujifilm um, app, which uh, you can get onto your phone. Um, it will download the latest firmware with, for your specific camera and then send it to your camera. So you have to pair the camera to your phone and you can do that um, directly from the app it will switch on um, the bluetooth connection it will look for your camera it says do you want to pair this camera uh, to this phone you say yes then you can look for the latest firmware uh, update it downloads onto the phone and then sends it over to your camera make sure your battery is fully charged when you do this because if it fails during the uh, the update that's a problem the next thing that you want to do if you're anything like me without perfect vision is to set the dioptic um, which is this little uh, circle here uh, on your camera uh, you just ease it out from the body a little bit not a lot don't use too much effort and bring the camera to a focus on something that you can see very well and then adjust this wheel so that it looks to your eye perfectly in focus that way you know that your pictures to your eyes are in focus as well as to the camera of course that doesn't change the focus of the camera it just changes what you can see through the electronic viewfinder and the display at the back okay so we've come outside we're in the middle of lockdown three so the best i can do is stand in my garden and uh, show how to set this camera up uh, i live right by a train station and by a road so you, we may get some noises off but let's see how we get on there's a car so the first thing that I want to do is set up the camera uh, to record raw images. Raw images are the highest quality that we can get uh, and we don't lose anything in uh, the camera processing it. So I want to set up for raw. So uh, go to the menu uh, and change the image quality to raw. Okay. So I got that quite um, slightly wrong. What I sh should have said was set it up for raw and JPEG. And so here, we set it up like this. That's why when we record to two different slots, we get the RAW in one and the JPEG in another. Also for this new camera, and I haven't fully tested it yet, um, the file sizes are about 50, um, 55 megabytes. Um, I'm gonna go for the compressed version of RAW files, which brings it down to about 28 megabytes. So far, it looks like there doesn't seem to be a discernible reduction in quality, but I'm gonna check that in coming days and you might wanna check that yourself. So. So that way you can save a bit of card space. One of the great advantages of using the X-T3 is that you can to use two slots, one to record raw files and one to record JPEGs. And the way you do that is that you go to the wrench, you go to 
save data setup and there you change it from sequential for the card slot setting to raw and JPEG and now when you take a picture raw file records to the first slot and a JPEG facsimile goes to the second slot. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a limitation on ISO. Generally I'll record, um, I'll shoot in full manual which means setting the ISO but sometimes uh, you're, when you're playing with shutter when you're playing with shutter and uh, aperture um, you, you're leaving the ISO to uh, decide for itself uh, in auto mode but what you want to do is limit how far that goes up so to, to set the maximum amount uh, the, the maximum level of ISO you go into the camera setting in the menu and uh, on the second screen there is an ISO auto setting when I received the camera it was set to auto 3 which as you can see goes up to 3200 which is far too high for what I would feel acceptable for a landscape picture so I've now I've set it up to 800 which is not ideal and normally I would shoot in the base level the ISO 160 but here if I set that I know that I'm not going to record any photos over 800 ISO. The next thing that I would uh, change is um, the white balance and we can do that using the Q button over here now normally the camera would be set up to auto white balance but I don't want to do that so I'm going to change that to Kelvin and you can see that you can set the Kelvin using the D-pad using this button here uh, and select a white balance that suits the, 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 um, the temperature that you're looking at and for today that looks about perfect. The next thing that I would want to do is to change the display setting on the screen. As you can see here that I've got some information about the I've got information about the ISO, uh, the F uh, level uh, and the shutter speed uh, but I haven't got the histogram and I haven't got other information so if I go into my wrench and to screen setup on the uh, bottom of the second page you can have custom display settings and here you can um, opt various items in and I always go for framing guide an electronic level uh, the manual focus distance indicator and the histogram and now you can see that your histogram is here and as I change that the histogram changes as we go um, you can see that as I focus the, uh, the distance from um, uh, the focus distance changes as I change the focus uh, and uh, I now have um, as much information that I, as I would want on my screen. In terms of the electronic level you can see here that I'm not exactly level and there I've been able to secure that so that's uh, those are the items that I would set on the uh, display um, on the camera the next thing that I would do would be to assist my focusing and for that uh, there are a couple of settings that I use the first one is a focus peak highlight uh, and you do that in your auto focus menu manual focus and manual focus assist and set that um, here I think uh, red high is good so now when I hit focus everything uh, that is in focus can uh, is highlighted red and as you can see as I turn the focal uh, the focus ring round things become more and more and or less uh, in or out of focus the other thing that works really well in combination with the focus peak highlighting is focus check and if you click that to be on the minute you turn the dial the focus dial it will jump into where your focal point is if I zoom in uh, and then focus on the uh, the birdhouse if I turn the, uh, the focus ring you can see now whether the uh, the birdhouse is in focus and the areas around it 
So that's a great advantage that I use a lot. The problem with uh, the peak focus is that it, I find it really difficult to see uh, what's going on. So I like to be able to switch that on and off. And the way you can do that is using this dial here. Uh, you press it once for standard, and then there's a couple of uh, items which I don't like. Digital uh, micro prism and focus peak highlighting. So you keep on pressing the, uh, the wheel here and you can switch uh, focus peaking on and off. And for those of you who are new to Fuji, um, you should know that you can assign functions to individual buttons on the uh, camera. Uh, and the way that you get to assign these is by pressing the display back button and hold that down and you'll then get a screen which shows you uh, which button you can assign to what function. So for me, this button here on the front is one that I like to set up as um, the electronic level. Now you can see that if I press that, I get the full electronic level with the, uh, the absolute level and the relative uh, level. Uh, the next thing I'll set up on the dials is a self timer. So for a lot of uh, landscape photography, you don't want to be touching the, um, the, the camera when you release the, the shutter. And consequently, I like to set this button here to be the self timer. Well, apparently I've already set that up. So now when I press this, I've got a two second timer available to me. Um, so I'm checking my focus and I have a two second timer. And the last thing that I'll have as quick access is um, access to white balance. So again, uh, I'm gonna come down to the D ring and I'm gonna set function four up to be white balance. So now when I press that, I get straight away the, uh, the Kelvin score uh, available to me. Uh, when you're in manual focus, you also probably want access to be able to move the manual focus point around. And again, I set that up on the D-ring on the bottom place. So now I can move that around. I hope you found this useful. I'm going to go back inside where it's uh, warmer and hopefully not quite as noisy. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope you found it useful. And if you have, please like and subscribe. It does an awful lot of good for this channel to help me uh, to grow it so that we can bring you more uh, ideas about how to improve your photography in the coming um, months and years. Um, so thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.